hello guys welcome back to take dose and in this video we will see what is jump search and how to apply jump search in order to search for an element present in an array if you have not yet subscribed to our channel then please do so in order to watch more of these programming videos so let us get started our objective is to do lower number of searches than the linear search the most simple searching algorithm is linear search where we need to search for an element by passing through all the elements and we need to compare it with the target element but the problem of this algorithm was it is taking order of n time we want to reduce time from order of n to something less this is our main goal so let us see how the jump search helps us in attaining a time complexity lower than order of n so i have already made an example here we have 12 elements from 1 to 12 and we have taken a block size of m and total number of elements as 12. This jump search basically works like this. It will start from an element, let us say it starts from 1 and then what it will do is, it will not check for each and every element. It will take a jump size, let us say the jump size is 3 here. Then it will skip all the elements and will go from index 0 directly to index 3 and then from index 3 directly to index 6 and then from 6 to 9. So you can get a feel that it is not searching for all the elements instead it is dividing this entire array into number of blocks. And so since this array is already sorted because jump search will always work if the array is sorted you can find for an element by using this type of method. Let us see this technique by searching for 12. So what we will do is we will keep two pointers one will be at index 0 and the other will be at index 3 let us say the lower pointer is low and it is index 0 and the higher pointer is high and it is at index 3 okay so we want to find 12 let us see how many jumps we require this 12 is greater than this element at low as well as this element at high this lower element is 1 higher element is 4 and since this array is already arranged in ascending order so this 12 cannot be present in this block. So what we will do is we will just increment this low value to 3 and this high value to 6. And we will also keep a counter of number of jumps. So let us say this is number of jumps and it is 1 because we have taken 1 jump. Initially it was 0. Now we will update this low to 3 and this high to 6. Now what we will do is we will compare this 12 to both this low and high value. Since this 12 is greater than this low as well as the high value, so it cannot lie in this block. So what we will do is we will increment this low to this high value and this high to the next high value. So this low will become 6 and high will become 9 and number of jumps will become 2. Again the same will happen. 12 is greater than 7 as well as 10. So low will be updated to high and high will be updated to still a higher value. So low will become 9 and high will become 12 and you can see that 12 is not present in our array index number 12 is not present since we have only 12 elements and our counting started from 0 so what we will do is we will just compare it with low and since this element 12 is greater than this 10 so if this element 12 is present in this array then it will definitely be present on the right hand side because the elements are arranged in ascending order or it may not be present as well. So what we will do is we will have to do a linear search in this block because we don't have the right boundary and it is sure that it should be present in this block or it will be absent. So how many jumps have we already taken? We have taken 1, 2 and 3 jumps. Okay, so we have taken 3 jumps and now what we will do is we will go to 11 now the number of jump will become 4 11 is not equals to 12 we will go to 12 our number of jump will equals to 5 now 12 is equals to 12 and so it will return a value true that it is found at index 11 so our result will be that the value 12 was found at index 11 you can see that this algorithm is performing way better than the linear search but one question will always come to your mind what will be the optimum block size before talking about the optimum block size let us see what is the time complexity so the time complexity will be 
what is the number of jumps if there are n elements n number of total elements in the array and you have divided this array into m number of blocks then there will be a total of n by m number of jumps if you are jumping the entire block then there will be a total of n by m number of uh, jumps and then in this case you can see that we cannot just jump the blocks and search for an element but the element can be present as the last element of a block like in this case if there would have been an element let us say 13 then what would have happened this 12 would have been the last element of this block and so if there are m elements in a block then there can be m minus 1 number of searches because we need to do linear search within each block so what will be the total time taken the number of jumps the number of jumps for the blocks and then the number of elements within each block this will be our total time complexity so we want to find we want to actually determine what will be the optimum block size what will be the optimum value of m so let us just see how can we find the optimum value of m you already know that the time complexity is n by m plus m minus 1 this is the time complexity you want to find the critical point so what you need to do is you need to differentiate it with respect to m and you need to make it equals to 0 so let us just differentiate it and see what is the output we will have minus n by m square because this 1 by m is nothing but m to the power minus 1 and if you differentiate it then it will be minus m to the power minus 2 and so a minus has come and now this is a constant so it will be equals to 0 and this is m so this will become 1 and this will be equals to 0 now when we calculate it will be n by m square equals to 1 and this will yield n equals to m square or you can also write m equals to root n so whatever the number of elements is optimum block size will be root of the number of elements and this is square root okay let us see the performance of jump search as compared to linear search as well as binary search so our linear search linear search takes a time of order of n our binary search takes a time of order of log n but what time does our jump search takes our jump search takes a time of order of n by m plus m minus 1 this is the time complexity and when we analyze this time complexity then you will find that order of n is greater than the time for jump search and this jump search time is greater than the binary search time okay so you can say that the jump search is better than the linear search but it is not better as compared to the binary search because binary search will always guarantee you that it will take a time of log n but jump search will not guarantee that if the element to be searched lies on the boundary of a block let us say you wanted to search for 10 then what we will do we will just jump these elements and we will directly find 10 without having to do the linear search so in that case the time complexity will be order of n by m this is only for the boundary cases if the elements lies on the block edges okay so i hope you have got a good idea about jump search if you have any query or questions then do comment below i will try to help you as soon as possible please subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of these programming videos see you in our next video thank you